All right, guys, here is your next fun sheet, um, which is PS 1.1, Develop and Use Models to Illustrate the Structure of Atoms, Including the Subatomic Particles with Their Relative Positions and Charges. So we've been talking now, leading towards the periodic table, and you are starting to see some terms again and again and again. And I'm just going to keep going over these terms again and again and again, and hopefully... They will stick with you, and you will really know them um, here pretty soon. So some of these are a repeat, so it should be easy for you. So first of all, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Very good. Remember that matter is everything around us, and there are three states, which are solid, liquid, or a gas. And then also remember that all matter is made of atoms. So that's just a little flashback to our matter stuff, okay? And now we're going to talk about atoms specifically. So atoms comes from the Greek word atomos, which stands for indivisible, which we know that it takes a whole lot of heat from a very strong, powerful uh, laser to separate atoms or explosion to separate atoms. And um, we can't do that. It has to happen in a laboratory. All right, so, which is why it's indivisible. And when they came up with this term, they probably did not know that they could be divided. So let's talk more about atoms. Everything, the next, like, six bullets are about atoms. So atoms are the basic unit of all matter. They, atoms make up elements. An atom of one element is different from the atom of another element. So all atoms are not the same. Um, atoms are made up of or consist of protons, neutrons, and electrons. All atoms are extremely small and made mostly of empty space. And we also know that atoms are always moving. Um, now we're going to talk about protons, neut neutrons, and electrons real brief, and then how we know this stuff. So protron protons have a positive charge and are found inside the nucleus of the atom. And just like in a cell, the nucleus is the center part of a cell. The nucleus here is the center part of the atom. Neutrons have no charge. And sometimes we say that that's neutral. And if you want to think about how the words are spelled, N-E-U is how you start the beginning of neutral and NEU is how you start the beginning of neutrons because what type of charge they have is going to matter and so you need to be able to help yourself remember. So neutrons have no charge which means they're neutral and they're found inside the nucleus of the atom. Electrons have a negative charge and are found outside the nucleus of the atom. And they're found in this place called the electron cloud. And we'll talk about that towards the end when we label it. So how do we know all this stuff? Well, it's been a long road full of lots of scientists doing lots of research and being very inquisitive over the years. We're just going to talk about um, three main scientists and just real brief, but this has been a developing concept for hundreds of years. Okay, so first we have Thompson. And the Thompson model was a model, was a model, um, where he thought that atom, that an atom was solid, was a solid mass, and it had electrons, but he thought it was suspended throughout. So he thought, what they likened it to was like plum pudding 
or something that might be more familiar to you would be like a blueberry muffin. So make sure you add blueberry muffin. You can see the muffin and then you can see the blueberries throughout would be like the electrons. And that's kind of what his model looked like and what he thought an atom looked like. And then a little while later, we had Rutherford. And Rutherford's model, he said that um, they were dense, there was a positive center or a nucleus, the positive charge protons, there was negative charged, or there were negative charges scattered in the empty space around the nucleus, so the electrons. And so, as you can see, the more the scientists do research and the more they discover and the more they build on each other's discoveries, the closer they're getting to the real thing. And then finally, we have Bohr's model, and this is the one we use mostly still today. I'm going to talk, talk to you about one other one, but this is the one we use because it's um, easier for us to understand because it's flat and it's not three-dimensional like what we know them to be now. But Bohr's model says the nucleus is in the center, there's protons in the nucleus, and the electrons moved in a fixed orbit. So that's pretty much where we are now. We know this to be the most accurate. Um, what you're used to seeing, let me see, nowadays when you see like, when you do an atom search, it'll show you this picture here. And that's three dimensional. And it's hard for us to talk and draw and learn in this three-dimensional picture. So that's why we use the Bohr's model, because it's flat and it's not three-dimensional. But what we really know now is that there's an electron cloud model. The nucleus is in the center, and it contains the protons and neutrons. The electrons are in constant motion and travel in ever-changing orbits. So all of this can be applied to the Bohr's model and just we just don't see the electrons in constant motion. We just know that they do move. Um, and then as we're talking about models, let's review what a model actually is. A model is a true representation that helps us to understand the true structure of an object. So we're going to label a model of an atom and um, so we can start to see the parts and you're going to have to know this so make sure you label it correctly and label it well so that and clearly so that you have this for future reference all right so on this picture um, we're going to start with the nucleus we have the protons and protons are the yellow shapes in the center of the nucleus um, and the thing in parentheses is a P with a little plus sign like a positive sign showing us it has a positive charge and then we have the neutrons and neutrons are the red in the nucleus there and um, the N it's an N with a zero or so uh, exponent with a zero looking thing above it because there is no charge if you remember from our notes on the neutrons. And then there's the electrons, and they're on the outside rings. And the electrons, you know, have a negative charge. Um, and then the protons and neutrons live inside the nucleus. And then the sh those rings on the outside where the electrons live are called the electron shell or sometimes we just call it the shell um, or the rings. So those are what surround the nucleus. So those are all the parts of an atom.